Hey home bakers and bake off fans, it's Jack here at bakewithjack.co.uk feeling a little bit excited and a little bit nervous, a little bit everything really. So what better way to start off this video than with a glass of milk? Literally, glass of milk. Roll it. <laughs> Hey you guys, welcome back, it's Jack here once again divulging my innermost feelings, what I'm thinking as I'm watching the Great British Bake Off every single week. And yes, it's very, very late this week. I had a little catch-up sesh, just watched two episodes in a row, so I'm going to uh, talk about it. Let's talk about it, episode four, Dessert Week. So this week, unfortunately, poor old Terry was a little bit poorly, so he didn't make it in. But you know what? They told us, they let us know that all the bakers got together and they said they're cool with it. It's cool. It's fine. Bring him back next week because they're all buddies now. They're all pals. They've been spending some quality time together inside of that marquee and they're absolutely fine with it, which is really a lovely Thing. So nine bakers remain in the competition at this stage and to kick off dessert week the signature bake was a rather classic meringue roulade which let's face it we've seen tons of these on the Great British Bake Off and the key thing is not to bake that meringue too much so it becomes crisp and impossible to roll yet not undercooking it so it still provides enough strength and support for that filling and I feel like like meringue is sweet right we all know meringue is literally sugar and egg whites and once you cook it it's pretty much just sugar so everything you put inside of it it's got to have a little bit of acidity a little bit of a twang just to take the edge off all that sweetness otherwise it can all just be a little bit too much as always in the signature round it there's pretty much a fair game like everyone just does what they want to do as long as they stick to the guidelines of making that meringue roulade so anything they want to put in it or on it is completely up to them and there's a few things I want to point out at this stage that caught my attention a couple of people opting for a coconut roulade which is quite a classic combination I think meringue and coconut which is wonderful Dan coconut mango and lime curd lime curd is delicious that'll cut through that meringue really really nicely also Ruby went for coconut making a pina colada one it's a little bit alarming that she was cutting up a uh, tinned pineapple but I got over that quite quick John's gone totally tropical as well, which does not surprise me, judging by his choice of garments he likes to wear. He went with a passion fruit and mango, and he made some little mango egg yolks, which I want to talk about a little bit, because these little mango egg yolks, like a mango puree, and he used a combination of chemicals that I wrote down. Calcium lactate, sodium alginate. If you know me by now, which you probably do, there's a few things that I find alarming. One is words like that, and two is copious amounts of different coloured stuff. Uh, too much bright, vivid colours. Uh, sorry, Stacey D's from last year, but that's the truth, right? That makes me feel a little bit strange, but he made these lovely little mango egg yolks that held the shape into a little ball on the top of his roulade and they cut into them and all the sauce come out which is a very clever thing to do the more i see john the more i see john be very very knowledgeable in what he does manon i find a little bit alarming as well at this point because she's got so much skill and they've sort of kept her in the back a little bit so we don't see too much but her flavor combos are always spot on however this round I, find, I want to use the word complacent. I don't know if that's quite right, and I hope she's not being a little bit complacent because she'd never made a meringue roulade before, and this is not the first time I've heard Manon say she's never made something before. She's never made a meringue roulade, and the first time she did it is the Great British Bake Off tent. Like, she could have done it last night. I mean, I don't know how busy she is. She could have knocked one up last night. Don't take long, whip up some stuff, bake it off, just to get it spot. On and as soon as she got it out of the oven, we was all looking at it thinking that looks a little bit crisp. And she had a lot of trouble rolling it, and in the end, it cracked. And she put some stuff down the middle to hide the crack, but she couldn't hide it for long because as soon as they cut it open, they noticed it. This is the shame of Manon. I hope she's not getting complacent. I hope she doesn't think, yeah. I've got this in the bag. So at the end of this round, I feel like we're all looking for that swirl, right? Because if the characteristic swirl means you've got the meringue spot on. And 
lots of people, they kept cutting them going, no swell, kept cutting them, no swell, no nothing, more of a fold, blah, 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 blah. Dan got the swell, Dan got the swell spot on, and Paul Hollywood actually said, a neat as a pin, which I believe is a catchphrase from last time Mary Berry said it. Just saying. I think he was the only person that properly nailed that swell. He got the awkward handshake, which is always a pleasure to see. And so did John. He got handshake too for his little egg yolks on top. Let's move on to the next round. The technical round, a 70s classic, a raspberry blancmange. And no, I have never made a blancmange in my entire career. Uh, and I don't even think I've actually eaten one. But I do know what it is. It's like a sort of weird set cream jelly thing with fruit puree inside. And actually, Paul, uh, he thought it was quite nice, which I thought was rather surprising. So this round is all about gelatin, right? Gelatin, and they quite happily told us that gelatin in the freezer, something happens to the gelatin and it doesn't set up properly if you freeze it for too much, which actually I didn't know because why would you freeze gelatin? So Manon most certainly fell into that trap thinking I'm just gonna freeze this for ages and I'm gonna pop it out, it's gonna be absolutely wonderful, but it was not wonderful, it was a puddle. Raspberry puree, by the way, if anyone needs a top tip to get all the juice out of a raspberry puree through a sieve, don't tickle it with a whisk or poke it about with a spatula. Ladle is what you want. Get yourself a ladle. The bottom of the ladle will fit perfectly into that sieve and you can just push it around, mix it around, pushing all that stuff, all the juice through the outside of the sieve, upturn it and all your bits and bobs are stuck on the underneath of your ladle. Job done. So as I said earlier, Manon had trouble. Hers did turn into a puddle when she turned it out. Karen had a little bit of trouble, but she brought it back. She got, off, she got away with it. She tipped it out. It started to spill. She chucked it back into the freezer. She did get away with it. It did hold some shape at the end. Also, what I did not mention is they had to make 12 identical Longs du Chat biscuits, which is cat tongue biscuits, basically long really thin, really delicate, and really crisp, which is quite a tricky thing to do. They all gotta be piped out nicely, and then they literally spread from a sausage into a really thin biscuit. A few people nailed it, they knew exactly what they were doing, and they got it spot on. But I thought because of that, because there's two elements on this one, it's a really difficult one to judge, because, um, you know, Manon, for example, her blancmange was, really really bad but her biscuits were spot on so I thought that was an interesting element to bring those two things together and judge them that way so let's go through with the rankings I won't do them all but we'll start with the bottom and the bottom at eighth place I think if you've guessed is probably Manon okay Manon is in trouble at this point because the first one whether it was or whether it wasn't being a little bit complacent she pretty much fluffed top three at three was John and John knows his stuff he sort of sails through at the moment he takes everything in his stride while dropping bombs like this egg yolk thing and the word bloom that he mentioned when he was talking about his gelatin earlier makes me think he knows what he's talking about third place John second place Ruby yes she shows it when she needs to and in first place Dan very consistent from the first round to this one. The handshake to first place, very consistent. All very interesting, all up in the air going into the show stop around. So the show stop around was a really, really good one. A really, really trick one, I thought. It was that chocolate sphere. And it was very important it was a chocolate sphere because I see some of these things in the chocolate spheres and other ones it's just a chocolate dome that's popped on top of a dessert. A chocolate sphere with a dessert inside and a hot sauce to pour over that chocolate sphere so it breaks open wonderfully, opening up and showing us that beautifully, immaculately put together dessert on the inside. This one I thought was really cool because it's very exciting. There's a lot of things to think about. You've got to think about elements in your dessert itself, whether or not it goes with chocolate. What is your source of choice that you're gonna pour over the chocolate? It's got to be hot. And is it gonna match that hot sauce? Is it gonna to match to the actual dessert you've put together inside? <laughs> a little bit stressful and very, very exciting. I love the fact that people can make that dessert whatever on earth they fancied making inside. As long as it worked, it worked. I think the main thing is to point out on this round is that two people 
did a chocolate, uh, did their chocolate around a balloon, which I think is very, very risky, and everyone else opted for a spherical mold. The two people that did the balloon was Raul uh, and Karen. I thought that was very, very risky and Raul had trouble getting his balloon out or making it the right size having got the balloon out uh, and he broke a little bit of, of it but I think I feel like the mold version is a much more stable much more uh, happier and controlled way of producing that sphere and there were some wicked spheres I want to say John again was so shiny his sphere was so shiny it was on Point. The other tricky decision to make was whether to use a dark chocolate or a milk chocolate or a white chocolate. Two people went for white chocolate, that was Ruby uh, and Bristol Bryony, and the commentator, Mr. Noel Fielding, nicely told us that actually white chocolate's got a lower melting point, so it's a little bit more risky, and in the end, both of theirs failed. Ruby's cracked up, she was putting it together with pipings of white chocolate, some weird earthquake patchwork sphere and Bristol Bryony is just collapsed into a little bit of a pancake on top which is a real shame in the end. There is one more person that I want to point out in this round because she was sad the first two rounds and that was Kim Joy. Kim Joy was sad the first two rounds. She was quite upset at the end of each which is which is like a little bit difficult to watch because I'm thinking like what are you upset about? Like she's got skills uh, she could put flavour together, it just probably wasn't up to what she expected the first two to be and she was a little bit upset, a little bit on edge going into this round but I thought she's pretty secure, she's got skills and she's secure and she pulled it out of the bag with this wicked like galaxy planet thing ball and she poured the sauce on top and inside were the little shoe bun turtles with crackling on top and I thought that was amazing. And I thought that was a really, really cool idea. Everyone's building up layered desserts. She busts in with these all these little turtles inside. And it was really original. I've never seen nothing like that before. And to see that happen, that is what the Bake Off is all about. Dan had an excellent idea as well. And while he was doing it, I thought to myself, that's probably what I would have done. Why aren't many people doing that? Which is to build his dessert in half of the sphere already. So to cut that sponge and everything he was putting in, into the shape of the sphere so it fit nicely in the bottom of the sphere without having any sort of separation like it was a pie put into a sphere for example. Let's go through with the big massive spoilers. I really, 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 really enjoyed Dessert Week. It was a really, really good one. Let's go through with the spoilers. Uh, the star baker of the week um, I thought could have been between a few people and Dan picked it up quite rightly. He's good, and he's been consistently good for a couple of weeks, um, and he just nailed it this week in all three rounds, which is really good. Congratulations, Dan, for being the star baker of the week. And if you don't know who went, if you don't know who it was that broke our little hearts, that brought a tear to our eye to say bye-bye to them as they left that marquee, um, it was actually nobody. Nobody went home because Terry's off sick and it wouldn't be fair to the rest. But next week, maybe two people go, maybe. I mean, I've already watched it, but maybe two people go, who knows. So we've had a little moment for Kim Joy this week and there's someone else I'd like to give a little moment to and that is Raul. Because Raul uh, it makes me a little bit upset every single week because he knows what he's doing He's very uh, knowledgeable about what he's doing and putting together flavours and stuff like this and he's got the skills. He's very anxious and uptight and apologetic and he's never happy with what he does. And he always it seems like he's given a compliment and he still feels like a failure and I feel like there's something maybe that's happened to him along the line that's made him feel that way about himself without the confidence and stuff like that, that's a real shame. And I hope that the Bake Off is the thing that gives him that booster. Do you know what I mean? That makes him believe that he can do what he does uh, and makes him feel good about it. So, cheers Raul. So there you have it, that's my thoughts on this week. Next week, episode five is Spice Week, which has never happened before. And I do love it when they come up with something new that's never happened before, but you know what? Who's going to go? Who's going to be Star Baker? We don't know. Actually, I do know because I've already watched it. Stay tuned. Bye-bye. <laughs>